So, I mean, some of the obvious benefits, you're getting cash straight into your business when you need it most. Um, typically, the financiers can turn around the application pretty, pretty quickly. Um, you know, we're talking days uh, rather than weeks or months. Um, often for a small business, the biggest asset on the balance sheet is the debtors, so they might have some equipment, uh, but in the main, their biggest asset is debtors. Uh, so being able to monetize that into cash straight away. Um, it's actually not debt on the balance sheet, so all you're really doing is you're replacing one asset, which is your accounts receivable, uh, with another asset being, being cash. Um, you don't need property security. Um, so a great uh, financing technique for people that don't have property, uh, or whose property is fully utilised, or perhaps they want to take their property out of the business, so maybe their wife or their husband saying, listen, this business needs to stand on its own two feet, I want to take the, you know, the marital home out of the equation. And that's a, invoice finance is a great way to do that, because um, you're not relying on that property security, really, that the business is standing on its own two feet um, and funding itself out of its invoices. Um, greater buying power, so you've got that cash in the door, you might be able to get a volume discount uh, or an early payment discount from your suppliers. Um, you don't need to offer your customer an early payment discount. Um, what we've seen is that often when you give your customer a discount for paying early, that works the first couple of times, but then they get lazy, they start paying on the due date or late, and they still take the discount, so that kind of becomes baked in and perpetual. Um, and of course, the facility grows as the business grows. Um, so the more you invoice, uh, the more funds that you can secure for the business. So this is that same graph. So the overdraft may have worked well in the first couple of years, but then the business is growing so rapidly that the, the cash requirements to fund that growth uh, move above the overdraft. Um, so maybe if you're in that point, you can't fund that growth. Um, but invoice finance allows you to do that. So you can see there in year three and four, as your debtors increase, so you can uh, get more cash out of those debtors and all of a sudden your debtors are funding your growth. Um, so you don't need to rely wholly on that overdraft. So as I mentioned, broadly two different sorts of facilities. So you've got the whole of ledger or the whole of turnover or the whole of book. Uh, or you've got the, the spot or the selective facility. So whole of ledger, I mean typically the, the financier is taking security over all of your invoices. Um, they want to typically see that you're a certain size, so it has to be like it's worth their while to make the investment. Um, so there may well be minimum turnover requirements um, or a minimum facility size. Um, a, a 12 or a 24 month contract. Uh, and generally the fee structure, I mean they're all different, but, but broadly speaking you'd be paying 1-2% to on your turnover, uh, which I guess covers admin, so that could be sending out statements, uh, reconciling your ledger, uh, chasing up the slow payers, and then there's a, uh, a percentage, call it up between 8-12% to on the, on the drawn funds. So you might have maybe $100,000 worth of invoices in a particular month, uh, the financier may be willing to lend you 80000 uh, You may only need to draw, say, $40,000 in that month. So in that case, uh, you'd be paying an interest rate on, on what you've drawn, so the $40,000. Um, very, very suitable, this form of finance, if really you need to finance all of your invoices, um, and it's going to be something that you're going to need for one, two, three years. Uh, it can be a great option and, and certainly uh, cost-effective. Um, I guess at the other end of the spectrum, there's a, a slightly more flexible uh, facility uh, called single invoice finance or, or spot factoring. Um, so you can finance one invoice. Um, so that the relationship with the financier could begin and end with one invoice. Um, you're only paying for the facility when you need it. Um, a fairly low minimum advance. So I've done an invoice of some clients for 5000 um, you're not locked into a contract, so you can come and go as you want. Um, again, no property security. Uh, generally, the fee structure is slightly different to, to the previous example. It's really a, a discount fee off your off your invoice. So, you know, generally around four, five, six percent. Sorry, are the fees tax structure, Gina. That would be yeah. 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 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, I guess the, the way that you account for it is like. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, I guess you're not collecting the full amount of. Yeah, it would be. It would be an expense, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's suitable if, uh, just for the short term, so it may be if it's, uh, maybe you've had a bad debt and you just need to, some cash in the door to pay some, some expenses, you can finance an invoice, maybe seasonal fluctuations, um, maybe a, a particular busy period where you need to finance some invoices or it may be, uh, as I mentioned before, you want to bid on a job and you just need to pull, I don't know, some money together to, to buy some supplies or, or get a team together. Um, the last one there, high value, low volume ledgers work best and what I meant by that is um, single invoice finance is particularly well suited if, you, if you've got big chunky invoices. Um, you know, so if you've got you know, lots of $500 invoices, that's probably less suited to single invoice. Um, that sort of ledger is probably better suited to someone uh, that can finance all of your invoices and, and really package them all up and, and finance them that way. Um, so that's just really, a, I guess, a bit of a diagram. So you can see there, whole of ledger, you're kind of looking at uh, you know, some of the banks that, that do invoice finance and some specialist providers like Bibi and Scottish Pacific. And then you've got more of the, the niche providers that are doing the single invoice stuff. And, and certainly there's a, there's a place for, for, for both of them. And uh, often the way we work, there are referrals that go both ways. Um, so. For us in the single invoice finance space, you know, I had a client a few weeks ago that was in fashion and he had lots of small invoices, um, wasn't really well suited to what we do. Um, he was better suited to uh, someone who could finance all of his invoices. Um, lots of industries are suitable. I mean, as I said, if you're business to business uh, and, uh, and issuing or offering credit terms, uh, then it can fit. But typically what we see is manufacturing, uh, wholesale and logistics, sorry, wholesale importers, uh, transport logistics, earthworks, um, professional and mining services, uh, IT, marketing and media, but really anyone that is uh, that's doing um, business to business on credit terms. Um, Invoice finance or cash flow finance can actually be quite a good stepping stone uh, to get bank finance. Um, as I mentioned, often your applications turn around faster. Uh, the financier is more interested in the creditworthiness of your customer. Um, once you've got that facility up and running, you're able to grow, you're paying your bills on time, you're paying your tax, um, you're growing. And the banks love to see that. They love to see that trading history. They love to see uh, lack of adverse credit uh, on your credit file. Uh, they love to see tax being paid. They don't like seeing arrears. And then over time, hopefully, you develop that, that track record uh, so then go to the bank maybe after two years to say, you know, look at me, uh, this is where we're taking the business, we've grown, and, and I'm sure you know, the likelihood is they'll be more amenable to, to giving that loan. I mean, just as a, a bit of a case study there, so we had a, a client who was in really labour hire, so he had a whole, a whole bunch of guys that were in uh, you know, blue collar, yellow collar type work. Um, he had a small overdraft, um, about a $40,000 overdraft, um, but he didn't have any property. Um, he was a real salesman, so he was growing um, exponentially. But he had to pay his guys weekly, and his customer would pay him for, uh, 14 days at best. So he had to carry two weeks worth of wages until he got paid. Um, he then started getting a track record, um, started uh, pitching for bigger clients who laughed at him when he said 14 days. They said 30 days in a month. So he could have, there's no way he could have funded that himself. He didn't have the financial firepower um, to pay the guy's wages for that long. But with an invoice finance facility, no way would the, the guys have gone out, gone out, they've done the work, the, the timesheet's there, you know the invoice is going to get paid, so the you know, financier advances him that cash. So he can, he can take those jobs uh, take those jobs on with confidence, knowing that he's going to be able to pay his guys. Because um, obviously, if he can't pay his staff, they leave, and then he hasn't got a business. Um, another customer of ours, um, he was a wine importer, so he was importing wine from South Africa. Um, outrageous terms offered by the large grocery 
um, chain, so take your pick. Um, 90 days in a month, so they were basically getting his wine, sold it, asked for more, sold that, asked for more, sold it, and even hadn't even been paid for the first lot yet. Um, so he had to pay uh, the supplier in South Africa after 45 days, so there was just a really a, a timing mismatch. So the business was profitable, uh, you know the invoices were going to get paid, but to, to fund that growth, he needed uh, an invoice finance solution. Um, so we were able to fund uh, his invoices that he had with that grocery chain. Um, and they've now put him on some more favourable terms, um, so he can now fund that growth himself. 